All right, welcome back and thank you for subscribing and tuning in to another video. Hopefully you are enjoying these and learning a little bit more about AutoCAD. All right, so the example that you see on your screen here is the reason why I chose it is because you would look at it and you would naturally think that I have a triangle so I should create a polygon. Well, that's kind of not the case in here. We're gonna still have to use some rectangular coordinates and I'm highlighting the dimensions that we're gonna use for that. Everything else should be self-explanatory. And this one is another one of those good examples about how to use the tangent when you're creating lines. So you have to use the tangent command twice. And this is also another one where we're going to use a few multiple fillets. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to AutoCAD and get started. Okay, so like normal, let's go ahead and get rid of some things. Let's go ahead and take off our grid since we don't need that one. We're going to use ortho. I could use polar tracking, but I prefer to use ortho. And let's go ahead and check our O snap settings. And these are the typical O snaps that I'm going to be using. All right. So I'm just going to kind of pan this up a little bit. And just so I can see the zero, zero. And that'll help me out when I create my first dimension or my first object. And then when I move stuff around, I can use just regular coordinates. All right, so let's go ahead and first create our first circle, which is the one on the outside. So I'm going to use a center radius circle. We're going to type in 0, 0, because that's going to be our location of it. And then we're going to type in the radius, which is 20. Now you see that it is a little bit big. I'm just going to scroll back a little bit. Next, I'm going to create my next circle, which is a circle center radius as well. I'm going to type in 0, 0 as its coordinates. And this one has a radius of 15. So I'm just going to type in 15. And then I'll go ahead and create my last circle here, which is a diameter circle. And it has a diameter of 20. So I'm going to switch to circle center diameter. I'll type in 0, 0. And this one is asking me for a diameter, and that's going to be 20. All right, so now I have all three circles that I'm going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and move this to the correct location. All right, I'm going to scroll out a little bit just so you can see it happening. Let's use the move command. I'm sorry. Let's use the copy command. And we're going to highlight all of this stuff. So I can type in ALL since these are the only three objects on my screen. Or I can just put a window across it. Either one is fine. Enter. Base point. Now I'm moving it from a location to a location, right? And this is one of those things that you can figure out the displacement or if I'm going to an exact location. Well, in this case, it really doesn't matter since I'm kind of moving it at known numbers that I know. So if I just click here, I'm going to tell AutoCAD where I want it to go. I want it to go 32.5 to the right. So remember the X coordinate is first, comma, then I want it to go 65 up. So I'm just going to type in 65 and hit enter. Remember the reason why we can do that, and if you look kind of here on my screen, it puts that at symbol in front of it, and remember that's because of the dynamic input. All right, so we can do that exact same thing again, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and escape. And I, if I want to, there's a couple of different ways I can put the other circles on the other side. I can simply copy these and move them over at 65, and that'll do the job. I can use the mirror command. And I can mirror this. And remember, I do have a line of symmetry right from this middle here that's going up. So either one of those methods will work fine. I think I'm going to use mirror in this case. So I'll go to mirror. Let's go ahead and select those three circles. Enter. I'll go ahead and select the center of my circle. You can also select any of these quadrants. Any one of them will work. So I'll left click here. I'll go straight up, and this is one of the reasons why I have my ortho turned on. So as long as I go straight up here in the air, do a left click, and then just hit enter. The answer to that question is going to be a no. All right. So what I could have did before I did that step was go ahead and put the line of tangency there, and that would have saved me a step. But it's good to use a little practice on doing lines of tangency. So I'm going to create a line. And remember, I'm holding down the shift button, and I'll right click. Let go of the shift button, go to tangent, click somewhere along this edge, hold down the shift button, right click, let go of the shift button, 
select tangent, and then select on this edge. Then hit escape. All right, I'll do the exact same thing on the other side there. So back to the line command, and this time I'm just going to type in L enter. Or I could have hit the enter button since line was my last command that I used. I'll hold down the shift button and right click. And you know what I'm going to do this time? Instead of doing it this time, this way, like we did it the last time, go ahead and hit escape. Let's go back to the line command. So I'm just going to hit L enter. And this time, I, instead of holding down the shift button and right click, and I'm just going to type in the first three letters of the O snap that I want to use. And in this case, it's going to be tan, T A N, enter. I'll click somewhere along this edge. And then I'll type in T A N again for tangency, enter. And then I'll click along this edge, hit escape. Now for this top line, one of my running O snaps happens to be a quadrant. So going right across here at the top, those are two quadrants that I'm just going to select. So if I use the line command and I select this diamond here, so I'm going to click on that diamond and then I'll come across and click on this diamond. All right. So now my outside of my object is created. Let's go ahead and get rid of these arcs that are located on the inside here. So I'm just going to go to trim and then I'll trim off these portions. All right, let's go ahead and hit the escape button. Next, let's go to the fillet command. So if you want to go to the fillet, you can go ahead and select it here, or you can simply type F, enter, and that'll take me to the fillet command. So the next thing I want to do is change the radius. And this time, instead of going down here on the command line and selecting the word radius, just type in R, enter, and then I can select my radius. In this case, will be 30, enter. And I do have more than one, so I'm just going to hit the M, enter button and that'll put me in that multiple phase of using these fillet commands all right so now let's go ahead and create our fillet so we're going to select somewhere along here and then we're going to come down and select here we're going to continue that theme around so we're going to select here and then here and then lastly here and then here all right so now we do have those fillets created Last thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim off these portions on the inside. And as you can see, this shape is now completed and created. All right. So thank you for watching this video. And if you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe and leave me a comment below. Or if there's something else you want to see other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. And once again, thank you.